Hey everybody, I'm Brad with Northern Brewer, and uh, this is a question we get quite often, is all about pumps. Uh, so we're gonna put together a bit of a video today uh, talking about pumps, what they do, how they work, how to use them properly, and how not to use them, and what you can expect out of using a pump. So here's an example of two pumps that we do sell on our website. Uh, this is the chugger pump, and this is our Northern Brewer Wirt pump. They both work in the same manner as they have an impeller on the inside of the pump head housing. And uh, the wort will go in from the center input and will be pumped out through the out. Oftentimes what really confuses people about these style of pumps is the fact that they are not self priming. You must fill the pump head and the tubing coming into the pump with your wort before you turn the pump on, otherwise nothing's going to happen. And here we've taken apart both of these pumps for you so you can kind of get a look under the hood and know exactly what's going on. Uh, these parts may look a little bit different between the two pumps, but the underlying principle on how they operate is exactly the same. These are both magnetically pup uh, coupled pumps, which means that the motor unit spins a large magnet on both, they both work the same way. And then the impellers are also magnetized. So when they are fully assembled in their housings, the impellers are magnetically coupled to the motor. So there is no actual physical connection between the drive and the impeller. Depending on how your brew house is set up, pumps have any number of operations. You can use it to transfer sparge water into your mash. You can use it to recirculate your mash. You can use it to pump your finished mash into your boil kettle. You can use one for pumping through a counterflow wort chiller to chill down your beer and go into the fermenter. As you can see here, we are brewing a Goza. And in this particular brew, what we are going to do here is recirculate the mash. And as you can see, the pump is mounted well below the mash tun. So that allows for very easy priming. All you have to do is make sure that all of your connections are made in the proper configuration and then open the ball valve on the mash tun open the ball valve on the output of the pump. This will cause wort to flow through the tubing, fill the pump head, and then close the ball valve on the output of the pump, turn the power on, and then slowly open the ball valve on the pump to start flow. It is best practice to have your pump mounted below the liquid level, so basically below your boil kettle or below your mash tun. Uh, this makes it much easier to actually prime the whole pump to get the the pump head full and the tubing full, so that way you can turn the pump on and wort will start to flow. One mistake often made by people trying to use a pump for the first time is having a setup like this, where the hose is draped in over the edge of the kettle and then into the input of the pump. This can be almost impossible to do because there is almost no way to get this effectively primed and the pump will also have a very difficult time getting the liquid up and out of the kettle to be pumped off elsewhere. Instead, this is the way you should do it. Make sure that your kettle has a ball valve on the very bottom. That makes it very easy to prime the whole tube and the pump head. And that way you can turn the pump on and push your wort wherever it's going. One important thing to note about these impeller type pumps is you never want to restrict the wort coming in. You only restrict so you can meter your flow on the output. So a ball valve on the output is your best bet. That way you can you meter your flow, you can go faster, you can go slower, depending on what you need in your brew house. Something else to keep into consideration is the actual orientation of the pump head when fastened to the motor. You're always going to want your output to be facing either directly up or make sure that the output is on the top side of the pump head. That way, no air bubbles can form here and cause cavitation of the impeller. If you were to mount it with the output going down, or on the bottom, you are going to end up with an air bubble in this part of the pump head, which will then cause the pump not to function properly. Same goes with the chugger pump. Either have the output going directly up or off to the side, still ensuring that the output is on the top side of the pump housing. Once again, if you go down or you have the output on the bottom, you are going to form an air bubble in this area right here and that will again cause the pump not to function. Another cause of confusion is attempting to pump boiling wort. This is generally not recommended at all. Uh, the reason being is oftentimes the steam pockets in the boiling wort can be sucked into the pump. And if you get a steam pocket in the pump head, it will cause the impeller to lose prime and the flow will cease. We do recommend letting your boil rest for a minute after you turn the heat off to let any sort of residual heat in the kettle get through the wort and no more steam bubbles are produced. Then you can go ahead and prime your pump, turn it on and get your wort flowing. 
Well, I hope this video helped to clear up any questions you may have had about pumps, their uses, how to use them. And if you do have anything more specific you'd like to ask or anything else you'd like to know about pumps, drop that in the comments below. Otherwise, you can always hit us up at brewmasters at northernbrewer.com. Till next time, cheers.